everyone, how's it going? Today I'm pretty tired, it's like 2am in the morning, but I wanted to get out this video to everyone who was following along and wanted to get some input on what I thought about the ore stacker, the cost of the gear, Expedition League, and yada yada yada. Because it's been an interesting journey with how hard the league is supposed to be and how overtuned some of the aspects of. Like the main thing is the flask ailment stuff where you can get shocked, you can get bled, you can get poisoned, and then you can't actually get immunity to those things without using... I don't know, you have to use the flask proactively, but usually the flask don't have that many charges anymore. So you immediately just get bled or you poison and you just die. And then you don't even have time to press a flask. But we have made it to level 91. We would probably be like level 94, 95 if we didn't die so much. But I did start off playing as an SRS aura bot. And later on, I kind of got impatient with my carries damage. So I switched over to a full on aura bot. I don't really know if being SRS really was that hindering was hindering it that much but I pretty much just swapped over because I felt a little tankier with this setup and I do think if you're playing SRS if you ran this exact same tree you would give your carry the same amount of damage but I just wanted to switch over to or stacker tree as fast as possible and you could still do this with SRS and I'm pretty sure it'll be fine I don't have my staff anymore unfortunately so I can't test it out but I did do a lot of maps on my SRS at like T16 and it was perfectly fine. So I wanted to structure this video was I want to go talk about quickly what I think about the changes and how Expedition League is. Then I'm going to go over my gear overview and then pretty much give some quick final thoughts about the aura stacker in this league and how hard it will be able to how hard it will be to afford the build. So you can see here, this is Expedition. Expedition, I feel like, is not that forgiving if you don't like to read every single box that you open. There's some stuff that's just absolutely crazy. And I don't really know if I agree with their design philosophy because if you think about it, this patch, they wanted to take away ailments or ability to have permanent ailments. But instead... After they did that, they decided to give all of the Expedition mobs the ability to permanently have Freeze on hit, Bleed on hit, Poison on hit, and have 100% increased effect of Shock. And what this means is that if you don't actually read what you excavate and you are just doing a Zoomer playstyle, you will die. And not to mention, if you're playing low life, there's also this one um, remnant or whatever that automatically kills you at 20% health. So if you're low life, you're below 20% health, which most people who play low life or stagger will be, you will immediately die. And I've had this happen multiple, multiple times while I was leveling. And it's actually my number one cause of death after switching over to a full on aura bot. In this video that I'm playing in the background, I am SRS still. But I did switch over shortly after as I wanted to be a little bit more tanky as I didn't feel super tanky doing like super juiced maps and like damage mod at T16s with only 3k life. But the main thing to note is that Expedition feels weird in that it's not rewarding 90% of the time. Like most of the times you do Expedition, all you get when you get through the remnants is you will see that you open some boxes and you get some artifacts. And then later on you have to talk to the vendors in town to trade those artifacts over to craft either an item or to craft uh what's it called or to haggle some exalts perhaps or to maybe buy a logbook i did find the logbook drop rate to be extremely rare in a 15 hour play session i only found one logbook it is very likely that i was just a victim of bad rng but it feels very bad to have like one of the most fun parts of the league which i believe is the logbook to be locked behind that much rng but you can see here, I was just chain dying doing these expeditions and it was actually getting kind of frustrating, which is why I decided to swap over. But if I was playing solo and I was doing the SRS Oraba, I think it would have been fine. Now, the main thing about this league is the fact that flasks are no longer able to grant you ailments. So if you look at this thing here, it says grants immunity to bleeding for one second if used while bleeding. I know you can't see it, so I'll put it over here. So what this means is that the flasks don't even have that many charges. So if you want to use this like proact or like reactively whenever you get corrupted blood or some sort of bleeding, you would have to never use this flask, right? And you would just have it sitting there 
waiting to be used. And a lot of times you remove the bleeding and then you get re-bled again and then you have no more flash charges and you're just dead. So it just becomes this really annoying playstyle where you're unable to do anything unless you just completely forego rolling the remnant with what's it called bleed and the same thing applies to shock you do something that has a hundred percent increased effect of shock you're pretty much just going to be dead so there's some expedition stuff that's just insanely rippy i'm not even sure how people in hardcore are going to do it i'm pretty sure most people will probably avoid it in hardcore and my next point of concern is warding does not remove curses anymore that means that a lot of maps are just no go like it's not like no go because it's super super hard it's no go because it's literally impossible like you don't want to do temp chains because it's annoying you don't want to do vulnerability because you'll pretty much just be dead and without any of those counterplay mechanics like having a flask up that just means that your map pulls will be so annoying to roll because you will have all these mods that are dead mods so I would sometimes spend like 10, 15, 20 or not that much currency but 10 chaos or so rolling like a batch of maps because I would constantly get minus max and then I'll roll into temp chains and I'll roll into early weakness with vulnerability and then I'll roll into enfeeble and enfeeble is absolutely terrible for a crit build and would cut your damage like by over half so that change is also very annoying and then there's also the fact that our movement speed is a lot lot slower and that we don't have the adrenaline flask and when smoke mine is literally complete garbage now compared to before uh, smoke mine is still pretty good to use and i would probably recommend if you have the link available to use it but yeah it just feels like a completely different game and it feels like a lot of the quality of life is taken away rather than the game actually increasing in difficulty. Because in the end, all this stuff with ailment immunity and warding, all that means is that people will just find other ways to get immune to it, and it doesn't really increase the difficulty of the game. All it does is it decreases the diversity of builds. Everybody will just be raider and get ailment immunity, whether through it's this area of the tree or crafting it on their gear, and it just becomes a necessity rather than a nice addition to the game. And the same thing will be for Curse. Like people will either just not run the Curse maps or they'll run a Xeris Reflection or they'll find a way to reduce Curse Effect. Now that might be a good idea of forcing people to solve problems, but in the end I feel like it kills build diversity, it makes it unfun to play until you actually achieve the immunity, and it's just a bad experience for beginners and newbies and experienced players alike who've been used to this way of playing. Now, it's not to say that this way of I'm used to playing is going to be completely accurate forever, but it is such a drastic change that I do think that it will put off a lot of returning and new players. But Expedition League, it seems kind of interesting. Hey. I do think that the gamble stuff has some potential. I do like the crafting Go things because well. you could actually get some pretty nice stuff. Survive. And then the haggler is kind of troll. Like here, I'm going to try to haggle. Let's try to get some transmutes, right? So I'm going to lowball the shit out of him. One, just one. And then he's mad at one, just one, for eight. You know, then you can keep offering, and eventually he'll give in or he'll reject the oh, offer. Oh, you've tired me out. I'm just gonna keep it. What you tired me out? I'm just gonna keep it. Okay, I see how it is. So you can see, I do like the expedition league in terms of like the people you talk to, haggling, gambling the items. I don't really like how little rewards it feels to do the expedition in the map a lot of times i do the expedition in the map and i'm just left with a bunch of artifacts that are clogging up my inventory don't give up i don't really know why ggg likes to have these big items it's like two by two or one by two instead of everything being nice and small or why they don't like having stuff that's only one type of artifact because it just ends up being a bunch of splinters in your inventory so i'm finishing the map off with like half an inventory worth of artifacts that's what it feels like and it just feels absolutely awful Hero. And I don't really know what they'll do, but I'm sure that Survive. as the league progresses, the league will get better and better, and GGG will fix a lot of the quality of life issues. But it's kind of a broken story at this time, and that I would prefer them to do a better job testing it and then be able to fix these issues before they ship the league. And I do think that they could have used some player feedback regarding the changes and the nerfs to the flask because I feel like. Some player feedback would have helped them out and there's not like 
a big surprise why on Reddit, even like the most veteran and hardcore old school players dislike the changes overall or has some aspect that they really do not like. But after all that ranting about the Expedition League and the changes and how it felt, I wanted to go over to the character, which is the important part, right, of this video, which is my Aurobot. Now I'm going to do an Aurobot guide, kind of, because I just wanted to help out people who are struggling and wanted to support because their characters weren't up to snuff. So the overall, the character is not the cheapest, or at least this version. But this version is meant for transitioning to or a stacker of a DPS skill, so I'm using a Shavs. I tried a 6-link this, did not go well, got a 5-link. Now, oh, in the Shavs, I have Generosity, Wrath, Hatred. I tried to put Anger in there, but I couldn't make the Mana Reservation work, but I'll do that later on. So what you want to do is you want to put the Generosity or Auras that are DPS that don't really benefit you. So it's generally Hatred, Wrath, Anger, and Precision. But I just don't have the color or they don't have the chromes to afford it at the moment. My weapon, I'm using a Thermal Edge. Now, Thermal Edge is something that most people use just because it gives you 48% increased maximum ES. Now, for the links, I'm running Smite, Generosity, Fortify. So again, Smite is a DPS aura. Generosity makes it affect our allies more. And then Fortify makes it so that when we Fortify, when we Smite, we trigger Fortify. Now, Alpha's how I bought this. It wasn't too expensive. I think it's only like 20 Chaos now, but it wasn't possible to find one with an enchant. Now for the Alpha Sal, I have Arrogance, Purity of Lightning, Purity of Fire, and Purity of Ice. So the plus 2 and a 21, when it gets to hit level 21, I think it's only level 19 now. It will give us 5% max res times whatever our aura effectiveness is. So I think it would probably give me 87% res. And then Prism Guardian was at 1 Exalt or so. So it was actually a lot cheaper than last league. And I'm running Discipline, Haste. Anger in it, the links. Ideally, you want 350% auras in the Prism Guardian, but I just couldn't find a nice way to make it work because I'm running too many like reduction notables. So for the boots, I'm running Sintrek. These are pretty normal boots. You pretty much run them because they're high ES and they give a lot of decks. Although you can find a rare pair of boots, but it'll probably be a lot less cost effective. Here I'm running Shield Charged so I can keep up with my carry. I have a Vitality. Grace and Precision. You can also try to use Vol Grace if possible. And then here is where I'm using my Elemental Equilibrium ability. I'm using Storm Brand. I have Dual Curse and I'm using Ellie Weakness and Frostbite. So since I'm the only support, I'm pretty much filling the void of the EE person, the Curse Bot, and the Aura Bot. So I'm pretty much doing it all. And the rings, I'm using some Amethyst rings so I can fix my Chaos Res. It's pretty nice that Amethyst rings are now I think it goes from like 17 to 23%, which is actually really crazy, but it feels nice to have some way of mitigating the chaos damage, and it will help a lot in Gauntlet, actually. Now for this, I think you can prioritize reduced effect of curses, and I think this is actually pretty important, but it's pretty much just a small benefit. So you can stack two of these rings, I think you can get 80% reduced effect of curses, and then you have 25% from your Guardian Pantheon over here. And then I don't know if you can get any from your... Can you actually get any from the Pantheon? Maybe you can capture something. But 30% reduced effect of shock. Yeah, I don't really see anything about curses. Oh, 20% reduced effect of curses. So with this and the two rings and the Guardian Pantheon, you could almost be immune to curses as long as it's not a red map. I think you need 140% in red maps. But it should still make the maps a lot less rippy. And... Beta Breath, or you can use any ES spell. I would probably use uh, Darkness and Throne with double RMR jewels. Now, RMR jewels are actually very expensive, and these are even including even the worst unique jewels. But I think they'll get to go down a lot in price as people stop playing Aurobot, because right now people are just searching for mana reservation or skill reservation in any way possible. And for the amulet, I pretty much just bought any anointed champion of the cause for like 10 chaos or 5 chaos, and I bought this for 5 chaos. And it was a pretty good purchase. I do have another amulet that I'm trying to roll. I already did roll it. I don't know where it went actually, but basically the amulet needs Champion of the Cause now. So Champion of the Cause, the golden oil alone costs like 110 chaos, so it's actually a pretty expensive amulet. So this is my aura stacker reroll tab. I have this, which is 5% reservation, 20% ES. 
and I have two Call of the Brotherhoods, and then I have the different gems. And I'm using Malagaros, I bought a Malagaros, because I think it's going to be pretty hard to get 300% multi, due to the fact that double multi RMR jewels do not exist, like if you go here. And I had to search running all day, and there's none up, and this is any right now, zero double multi RMR jewels. Now this might be because the league mechanic doesn't really offer that many corrupted jewels compared to ultimatum or ritual. So I think that it would be very very hard to get it until people start making them in harvest and then corrupting it. So I'm going to go over my tree real, real fast. This is pretty much an aura stacker tree. I have intuitive leap. I don't have might of the meek. I might get it. I wasn't running it because I like leadership and getting the area of effect and it was 6%. And basically, I'm just using any bad Vengeful Commander or any large notable that was 8 passive points so I can get to this node right here and put in my medium cluster. So I have a first among replenishing, I have another first among replenishing. I got these both from Harvest and using the Reforge. Then I have a self control sublime form, which reduces the discipline and then the grace reservation. And then I have another first among Vengeful Commander. And then I have another replenishing only and a replenishing stalwart commander, which gives you more grace and discipline effect. So eventually I want to replace all of these ones with first amount replenishings and then this one with first amount replenishing. And then this one I probably can't replace until I get more RMR jewels. So the tree, the only difference is, is that I take avatar fire, make sure to take zealous oath. So you can see I have a lot of jewels. So this is one of the things I was thinking about. If you have a lot of jewels and you don't really need RMR or can't get RMR, you can try to get ones with ES and then chance to avoid being shocked. If you get five of these jewels, you fix the shock immunity. Then you can't be frozen or shocked because of your alpha's hell. I also have some duration nodes. I think later on I'm going to switch it over to path alpha this way and then get might of the meek and then drop these duration nodes. Duration only matters for spite duration and vol haste, so it's not too big of a deal. It's actually probably a waste of three points that could go towards more aura effectiveness or more ES. But basically, this tree allows you to transition over to aura stacker pretty much as soon as you get a nebulous, six link your shafts, and find a way to get some multi and consistent crit. But basically, you just need some multi and some ES and some more R modules, and I should be set for aura stacker swap. But this is the character, and it is able to carry my friend who's playing a bow character using Lightning Arrow all the way through T60 maps. We even did some Conquerors and T60 Expeditions, and it was all not too bad after I swapped over and maximized the DPS potential of a support bot. Oh yeah, I also took these notes here for the additional curse for Whispers of Doom. hope this gave everybody a pretty quick summary of the yes. league so far and what I've been doing and my mentality behind it. I do think if I was playing solo and I was doing Stormbrand Archmage, I would be faster and more progressed, but I wanted to play with my friend. And playing SRS Orobot with a friend was kind of a bait. Because the SRS Orobot just... Or I think I didn't have good enough gear when I did it with him, because I was pretty much just SRS. And I tried out a Soul Rest staff, which turned out to be horrible. Because Soul Rest is actually a spell. And I wasn't running Zealotry Aura at the time. Now I also think you can transition to Aura Stacker with a lot less... Our modules if you buy a March of the Legion boots and a March of the Legion boots is probably only around I think it's only 5 chaos so everyone who thought it was 5 exalt was mega trolling or who thought it was going to be 5 exalts but anyhow that's it for the character and I hope this build review helped you out and showed you what you would need to do to be an aura bot and what you probably want to be saving up for to be an aura stacker but in the next days hopefully I'll have more expedition content I'll be able to do the boss because right now Expedition is kind of a crapshoot. I don't really know what to think of it. I definitely do not like the balance changes and how the game plays out now. But I do believe that as time goes on, I'll get more and more used to it. But let me know in the comments below what you guys personally think of Expedition League. I kind of already know that most people will have negative opinions. But who knows? Maybe there's some things that you guys like that I overlooked. But thanks for watching everyone. And I hope you find more Mirrors and Exhausts than I do. And see you next time.